Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand in the house tonight. We're here together in the Lord's house. Let's just come together. Let's give him a little bit of praise for just a few moments. Let's just lift him up tonight. God, you are so amazing, Lord. God, you are wonderful. You are our counselor. You're the mighty God. You're the everlasting Father. You're the Prince of Peace, God. Everything that we should ever desire, Lord, we can find it in you. Lord, you are so perfect in everything. You're on time. You're just everything for us, Lord. As we come together tonight, we just want to we want to come together as the body of Christ and pray. There's so many things going on around the world right now. We need to we need to pray for Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that we stay on the side that the Lord wants us to be on. We don't we do not want to go up against God at any time. We do not want to be on the wrong side of the battle. We want to be on the side of holiness. We want to be on the side that's going to win. We want to be on the side of victory, Brother Ronnie. And and I just want us to pray tonight that we would just stay in good standings with God, that our country and our leadership would stay where God wants us to be. And we just need to pray tonight. If there's any needs in the house, if there's any sickness, anything going on in your life, if you have a need, just raise your hand. Let God know. And let's come together and pray tonight. Lord, we just want to seek after you tonight, Jesus, because there's there's so many needs tonight in the house, Lord. I know there's sickness going around. I know, God, that there are things that only you can take care of. Lord, I pray that, that any situation that we have going on that we just don't know the answers to, God, I pray that you would come through for us once again. Lord, I pray that you would just have your way in this place tonight, Lord, that your spirit can just run freely, God, that we can have liberty in the house tonight, that there can be a freedom that we only feel here, God. Lord, there's something special when your presence shows up, Lord, when your spirit fills this place. God, we just want to pray tonight, Jesus. Lord, I pray that we stay on your side, Lord, on the winning side. Like the word says that I will bless them that bless thee. Lord, that's what I want to be, Lord. I want to be on that side. God, I pray that there is any need in the house tonight, Lord. I pray that, that we can cry out to you, Jesus, and that you will be this. Thank you, God, for everything that you do. Hallelujah, we love. 
got many different ways that we give here at the River Bend. We could get the ways to give up there, Sister Heidi. We've got Givelify and PayPal. You can get them, use PayPal at riverbendpentecostals.com. We have the old-fashioned way you can give cash or checks. We can mail those in to Riverbend Pentecostals at P.O. Box 477 here in New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. Or you can give in person if you're here tonight and all the pans are labeled as what they are, tithing on the inside and offering on the outside. We also have text to give. You can text the phone number on the screen and you'll get a prompt that will allow you to give through that way. But if you have faith tonight, I just want to ask that you would stand in the house and that you would pray this prayer with me. And we just declare faith over this offering tonight so that we can continue spreading the gospel into this world. So upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. Now bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus name, amen. Come and give church.
instill something in them, Lord, that's not going to leave them. God, your word says, train up a child the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from him. God, I just pray that there will be a foundation laid in class tonight, Lord. They're going to learn about how you love them, God, about what you do for us, Lord, and what, what kind of love that you truly have for your creation, God. And I just want to pray that you would just surround them, Lord. I pray that these kids are safe everywhere that they go, Lord. God, I just pray that you would just have your hand on them, God. Lord, in your scripture, you always had a special place for kids, Lord. And I just pray, God, that we could just realize that it's still that way. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go on ahead and lead them back. If you've ever been ignited, we're going to stay out here tonight. And be supportive of the ministry tonight. We're going to welcome brother chris kaiser up to the pulpit he's going to be the man of god tonight to deliver the word so let's let's just give him a little bit of praise tonight and see what he has for us opportunity to be here tonight, thankful for the opportunity to be able to uh, present what God's laid on my heart, and hope uh, everyone here will be able to get something from it. Uh, I've, I've titled my lesson, uh, With Faith I Can Do All Things. So I'd like to speak to you about our thoughts. It's important to realize that as Christians, each one of us must mold our thoughts to that of what the Word of God teaches us. In so doing, each one of us will begin to talk the same talk and to walk the same walk. This is because we are of the same mind because we have molded our thoughts to what thus saith in the Word of God. So if we put our 
if, if we do that and do what basically God tells us to do and we mold ourselves together, you know, we'll be basically yoked together in our thought processes and in the way that we look at things. 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Savanus and Tim Timotheus, was not ye and nay, but in him was yea. Verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Not some things, but I can do all things. So that tells us if we believe anything that the Bible says and we believe that the Bible is true, then we can do anything through Christ. There's nothing that we can't accomplish or, or that we can't do. But it's in your mindset. It's in your belief system. What's in your mind? What's in your belief system? Faith says that I can do it. Doubt says I can't do it. The Bible says I can. I can. My flesh or my mind says that I can't. Which will you believe? Which do you believe? I know often I've had more faith for someone else than I have for myself. And sometimes that's easier to do, uh, from my perspective anyways, because, I mean, I can tell somebody about how the Lord's in something that they're doing or, you know, to be patient, just hang on, just, you know, the Lord's got you. But when I'm dealing with it, you know, then I'm, I'm, I'm having to look at my own situation and things start turning a little bit then. But I have to be able to believe the word of God and, and know that that applies to me as well. Uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And he that, Romans 14, 23, and he that doubted is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Did everyone hear that? Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It's time that each one of us challenge our belief system. Let's examine our thoughts and see what we are telling ourselves. Is it a truth? Is it the truth or is it a lie? What are each one of you telling yourself? What are we telling each other? Are we supporting each other? Proverbs 23, 6 and 7. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. What are you thinking? What's in your heart? What are you desiring? Like I said, this is to kind of get us into our thoughts, to think about some things. I'll, I'll repeat that part again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts, thoughts are directly responsible for your feelings. If you believe that you are a failure, then guess what you're going to be? You're going to be a failure. If I believe that I'm a failure, then that's what I'm going to end up being because I'm going to be exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm putting forth my effort into. If you see yourself as a world changer, you will become a world changer. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You must guard your thoughts. What are you telling yourself? What are you allowing your mind to ponder upon? There's a, you know, the idle mind is a devil's workshop kind of saying. I mean, that's, that's something that, you know, if we're not careful, we can get to pondering on things. Also, use caution with who you hang out with, who you lock arms with. Someone else's negative way of thinking will spew over 
and spew out of them and be all over you, and you will begin to think just like them if you do not separate yourself from them. Philippians 4 and 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. This is a great filtering system for our thoughts. Think upon whatever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and things that are of a good report, not a negative report. The Bible tells us to think on things of a good report. But things which are of the good report. I, I had one little example. You know, I talked uh, with me and Derek was talking Sunday morning, and he just randomly asked me. He was had his cup. I think it had milk or something in it, if I remember right. But he pointed at his glass at the halfway point, and he said, "Hey," he said, uh, "What? How do you how do you see this cup? Do you see it half full or half empty?" And so I said, "Well, it depends on your perception." With my words, and he said, "Well, my perception is it's half it's half full." I said, "Well, then that's the positive way of looking at it." But you could e evenly you can look at that cup and look at it both ways. It's either half full or it's half empty. And each of us has the ability to choose which way that we're thinking and which way that we allow them thoughts to be in our mind. Do we allow the, the positive things into our life or the negative things into our life? Do not spend your time thinking about and speaking to others about things that are of a negative report. Even if the negative report is true, we are not to spend our time dwelling upon it. We are to think upon the things that are of a good report. This does not mean that you live life in a fairy tale world or you don't have problems. But this does mean that if you hear or see a negative report, you do not have to dwell upon it and you do not have to share it with everyone. Instead, look for the good even in a bad situation. Because God is God no matter what situation we're in. No matter what we have, no matter where we're at, no matter what the circumstances may be, God is still the same. Our flesh seems to always be drawn to, sp to spreading something negative we heard about someone over anything positive that we heard about them. All too often, we can't hardly wait to be the first one to tell someone about something somebody else done that was bad. And half the time, we don't even know if it's true or not. But we're willing to take that chance. But we can hear something positive about someone, and half the time, we're not even willing to share that information with anyone. Because that doesn't really seem to carry the same impact as it does to the flesh. First Peter 1 Peter 1.13 Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be uh, brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus. Gird means to encircle or secure with a belt or band. Notice carefully that we are to hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto us at the revealing of Jesus Christ. We are to maintain hope until the end. We are to maintain a positive attitude through hope. How do we maintain hope? We must maintain our faith. Remember with faith I can do all things. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. To maintain hope, we must maintain our faith. To maintain our faith, we must maintain our belief system. To maintain our belief system, we must apply the word of God to our thoughts, casting down imaginations in every high thing that it exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In order for you to do this, you must know the word of God. You must gird up the loins of your mind and apply what the word says. 
I don't know about you, but there's times in my life that, you know, I can let my imagination get carried away with me. Sometimes over the most simplest things that, you know, we, and, and we've all talked about it and heard different stories in different situations, but, you know, sometimes we can get caught up with different scenarios that somebody maybe even not saying something to us or uh, uh, just a, a various situations, and then we build a complete story in our mind of something that's not even happened and something that somebody else is not even thinking about sometimes. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. For all the promises of God in Christ are yea and in him. Amen. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. With faith, I can and I will. Not on my own strength, but through the strength of God, with the strength of God. First Peter 5, 8 and 9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You know, this verse stands out to me in a way no one is exempt from that. If, if you are weak or let your guard down or not girded up in the truth like you need to be, the devil is searching every day to destroy your life, to destroy everybody that he can destroy, and that's, that's his intention and that's what he's going to do, but only if we allow him to. He cannot destroy us unless we allow him to destroy us. He cannot devour one who is girded up in loin, by the loins of their mind. He cannot devour one that is applying the word of God to their life. He can only devour those who let him, those who either, uh, those who either of the word of God or those not applying the word of God, those that are unlearned of the word of God or those just not applying the word of God. Um, you know, we, we all know different people that's been in church or in some cases been in church for a long time and then they, they uh, backslide or they get out. You know, in my opinion, that's not something that happens overnight. Uh, they didn't just, you know, they wasn't coming to church and, and prayed up and, and studying the Word of God and reading the Word of God and doing everything they need to do and then just one day decide they're not coming back to church. But what's, if you look in every one of them's life, in every situation or every circumstance, there's things that they started allowing in. There's things that instead of reading the Bible, they started doing other things. There's, there's so many different things that they started replacing with instead of doing God's work and God's will and, and, and studying up and staying prayed up, that they started allowing other things in their life that then ultimately took over as being something that they was more interested in than coming to church. Because once you start thinking on other things, once you start desiring other things, whatever you desire for, whatever you want for, is what you're going to pursue in life. First uh, Peter 5 and then uh, verse 9. Verse 9 says, Whom resist steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in you, brethren, that are in the world. Your thoughts are directly responsible for your feelings. If you allow yourself to think that you are trapped and without hope, then you're going to feel trapped and without hope. No matter what your circumstances are and situations, and I'm not, I'm not trying to deflect or, or you know, take for granted what someone's going through, but no matter what the situation is, God has the answer. And God has, the, you, if you will study out his word, the, the Bible is a roadmap for our lives, and the answers to anything that we're dealing with are in there. It, and if we believe the Word of God, and we, we search it out, and we believe on that, then our answer is right there for us. We've just got to have the faith to believe it. Examine your thoughts. When you begin to feel unwanted thoughts, stop and begin to think about what you were thinking about. What are you telling yourself? 
Learn to identify what you are thinking that is triggering your unwanted feelings and learn to replace them thoughts with other thoughts and your feelings will begin to change. If you ever say, for instance, you know, the, the saying you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, uh, you know, sometimes we just get up and we're in a funk or the day just doesn't go like we think that it should or things happen. But if we will stop and really think about things and think about the fact that I did wake up, I am still breathing, I am alive, I am able to, to do whatever I'm doing for that day, you know, the things that we have, you know, we, we just need to be thankful. I, I know right now, just about any news channel that you turn to, you can turn it on and you can see people that aren't sleeping in their beds, their houses has been blown apart, their country's been blown apart. There's, there's so many things and you just stop and think about what we have here and, and maybe even things that, that two weeks ago we might have been complaining about that now we start looking at and thinking, you know what, I'm so thankful for what I've got. Because we have to look at what we're thinking and what we're putting in our mind and our perception about what we have. Because nothing we have here on earth matters except for our relationship with God and what we do with that relationship with God. Because all things here will pass away. And no matter what we've gained, no matter what we have, no matter what it is, you leave this world the same way you came in with absolutely nothing as far as physical wise. You must not only replace your unwanted thoughts with other thoughts, you must also change your underlying belief system that you are irrationally holding onto that is causing you to have the unwanted thoughts that you are having. Are you feeling down and out? Are you feeling depressed? Examine your thoughts and see why you are feeling this way. What are you telling yourself when you're feeling that way? I, I know, you know, kind of that same example. I mean, if, I, if I'm kind of in that bad mood, there's times that I've stayed in that bad mood because I didn't want to get out of that mood. I wanted to bask in whatever I had going on. And I wanted to just waller in it for a while. And I didn't want nobody to pull me out of it. I just wanted to, to just stay in that situation. And it's not a healthy place to be because it leads to more unhealthy things. But if we will examine our thoughts and if we will turn to God, you know, he will help us in, in any situation that we're in. Are you telling yourself that you feel down and out? Or are you telling yourself that you feel depressed because your feelings are a direct, direct result of what you're thinking? Are you telling yourself that you are without hope? Are you telling yourself that you can't make it? All of these types of thoughts are going to make you feel that you are without hope. And is this true? Remember what, the, what we are thinking about. Whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and whatsoever things are of a good report. How are you without hope when Christ is the hope of glory? Is what you are telling yourself true? Examine your thoughts and tell yourself what is true. I can make it. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Tell yourself the truth. I am not without hope. I have all hope in Jesus. I may have felt feelings of despair, but the truth is everything is okay. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of the king. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Romans 28, or Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 28 through 32. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom did he predestinate? Them he also called and whom he called them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 
What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? All things, not some things. I mean, we do believe the word of God, right? That's, that's what it says, all things. But all things, turn your negative thoughts into positive thoughts. One example, for instance, is I'm having a hard day. But thank God the day doesn't define my future. But my obedience to Jesus and the word of God does. So do not stop by just saying, I'm having a hard day. Doesn't mean that you're not having a hard day. I mean, we all have different you know, times where we have hard days or have bad days and things like that. But our perception and the way that we view that, this will give you a completely different set of feelings. You can change your thoughts and your belief system simply by adding more information to what you are telling yourself. I'm having a hard day, but thank God the day doesn't define my future. But my obedience to Jesus and the word of God does. So at that point, then it doesn't really matter what's going on in my day because none of that's going to matter anyways. Address feelings of self-worth and worthlessness. Is it true that you are worthless? Is it true that you have no value? Not according to the word of God. You know, I had looked to Google for some information. And uh, one of the things I looked up is the odds of, of, of being born. And it's one in 400 trillion. And of course, there's a bunch of different scenarios that it gives, you know, in there. But that tells me that I'm not here by mistake. And that tells me that you're not here by mistake. Because God doesn't make any mistakes. And when God creates you, he created each and every one of us with a reason and for a purpose. And there's no way in this world that one in 400 trillion that he's going to create somebody as a mistake with those odds just not going to happen. Matthew 10, 29, 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore ye are more value than two sparrows, or than many sparrows. So there again, you know, the Lord knows the numbers that's, that's on our head. Of course, I got a lot less than I had originally, so I, I'm, I guess he keeps up with that as well, but, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, when you look at that from the perspective and you see sparrows, you know, flying around and, and the Lord, you know, the value that he takes in them, and then we're his prized creation. So look at how he values us. Are you not judging and condemning yourself? while telling yourself that you are of no value and worthless? Is not this the way that you see yourself? Is, it, is this true then? At, at this point, even with thinking that, the answer is no. Because as we have seen, you must change your belief system in the way that you perceive yourself. You must challenge these unwanted thoughts and lies that, are, that you're telling yourself. You must ask yourself, is this true? And when I'm saying, is this true, does this align with the word of God? Because if it doesn't, then you must remember that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So Luke 6 and 37 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. 1 Corinthians 4 and 
3 and 4 says, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified? For he that judges me is the Lord. So do not begin to feel overwhelmed. Do not begin to think that I cannot do this. Faith says that I can. And remember, this is a process of time. It will take time to begin to recognize your unwanted thoughts and then to replace them with thoughts that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and things that are of a good report. And that doesn't mean that, you know, even if you really listen to everything that I go over here tonight, that you're going to leave out of here and, and you know, 100% be changed in your mindset. But if you at least put forth the effort to change it and at least start trying to change it, then you will see changes taking place in your life and in your mind. Because as, we, as we've heard with some of the scriptures that I've used so far, we, we mean something to God. So no matter what we're dealing with in life, no matter what circumstances life has brought us, no matter what has came against us in life, no matter what, we, through Christ, we can overcome anything and, and we can be better. And lots of times we all go through different things and we go, and, and sometimes they, they set the trajectory for things in our life that, you know, maybe it wasn't God's intention that we went that path because we chose that path on certain things. But he can turn things around for us when we have that, that want to and that desire to be changed. Each time you apply this, you will see your unwanted negative feelings disappear and new feelings will appear in their place. Depending on what you are willing or depending on what you are now telling yourself, you must believe that you can change your unwanted negative feelings. So if you want to change, you can change. Is it going to be easy? Not always going to be easy. There's going to be, you know, but it's one of them situations, as I said earlier, there's been days that I've wanted to waller in it. I wanted to hold on to it. I, I, I didn't want to be pulled out of it. So if we don't want to change, that, that's our free will. And guess what? We won't change at that point. Luke 12 and 29, And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, Neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Faith says that I can. If I gird up the loins of, of my mind and be not of a doubtful mind, for all the promises of God in Christ are yea and in him amen. If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say upon this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Do you believe it? Do you believe the word of God? Then we must eliminate the doubtful mind and the worries that accompany it. You must learn to let the peace of God rule your heart and your mind through Jesus. After all, faith says that I can do anything and I can accomplish anything through Christ. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A promise of God. However, the key to allowing the peace of God to keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus was one, be careful for nothing. Which means do not allow yourself to be anxious for anything. Two, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So are we, anytime we have a need, anytime we have a situation, are we praying about it? Are we trying to figure it out on our own? Are we doing something on our own without going to, to God in prayer and then wondering why we made a bigger mess out of our situation? 
And then we, you know, when we, at, finally at the end of the day, a lot of times we finally do circle back around to God, but we've got it backwards so many times. We use, we put, we go to God last instead of God first. And we need to put God first in our lives and we need to always pray. No matter what the situation is, no matter what, if it, even if it seems like a minute or minor situation or a major situation, we should always put God first. We should always pray about it. And three, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And going to God in prayer, let him, let him know the situation. Let him know what you need. Let him know what's going on in your life. He already knows, but I mean, bring it to him. At, this, at that point is when you say, nevertheless, Lord, your will be done, not my will. So I'll add a little to that part before I go on because a lot of times my perception of things and stuff that I want, when I really get in alignment with God and I really pray about something, Something that I've thought was an issue or that I wanted or, or something that maybe wasn't working out. Oftentimes, he changes my way of looking at it to, to the point to where what I was originally struggling with or having the problem with or an issue with isn't it there no more. Because my perception of things changed. And it, and it changed because I prayed and I sought out God's will. And his will was different than what my will was. Because too many times, I want to do things my way. And when things don't line up with how I think that it should be, then I feel like things aren't going like it needs to be for me. Not realizing that the big picture is God may be protecting me from something. God may be working things out. You know, I've had a situation, I had a, a situation a couple years ago when I was at Cape and I was needing to get a flat tire fixed. And the guy told me about 15 minutes he'd get to me. So I sat there. For 45 minutes and he still hadn't got to me and by this time my blood was boiling I was I was wanting to say something I was trying to, to remain calm I was very aggravated the people was coming in he seemed to just keep waiting on other people finally got to me got me taken care of I, I done the right thing I didn't say anything out loud although I was frustrated inside and feeling it I got on the interstate and got going down the interstate and there was a bad wreck and the interstate was closed down there had been a wreck about 30 minutes previous to me getting on the interstate. And I know we all probably have a variety of different stories and things that we could share. But it's one of them situations that I instantly, it was quick into my mind of, see, that guy was there for a reason. It, I was frustrated and I was aggravated. I was repenting upon think after seeing the accident and them thoughts coming to my mind because I'm, I was thanking God that he delayed me. You know, because I could have very easily been the one in that, in that incident or in that wreck. Uh, at that point is when you say, nevertheless, Lord, your, your will be done and not my will. It is at this point that you, one, choose to refuse to allow yourself to be anxious. Two, that you place your faith in the Lord that whatever the potter chooses to do will work together for your good. You then place your trust in the potter's hands. Wait with patience for what you have sought from the potter, accepting the will of the potter with contentment. So, as we talked about, you know, if I've got the faith, and if I trust God and I trust the word of God, when I bring something to him, I've got to understand whenever I turn it myself over to him that I'm allowing his will to be done in my life, even if it changes the direction that I originally thought was the best thing because he knows what's best. But if I'm prayerful and mindful of his word, and if I'm in alignment with him, then my whole belief and my whole thoughts or my, what I wanted is going to change at that point to be in line with what God wants. This is a delicate balance of belief, faith, hope, trust, acceptance, patience, and contentment. You must maintain each one of these in order to allow the peace of God to rule your heart and your mind. If any one of these gets out of balance due to your thoughts, or due to my thoughts, you are having... 
you are having, you will lose the peace of God that you are experiencing. This is because the belief and hope to maintain your faith and trust. If you follow yourself, if you allow yourself to begin to worry, then hope that you have in what you sought from God will begin to waver, which will directly influence your faith. This negative influence on your faith will then begin to destroy your trust that you had in God, which will then begin to destroy your belief in what you hoped for in God. Fear tells us things like, I can't do that. What if I mess up? What if someone sees me mess up? You know, because we can't mess up in front of nobody. You know, we got to try to maintain being perfect. How can I handle myself if I am made fun of? I don't understand. What or who do I turn to? Where will I go? How will I get there? What if I made the wrong choice? Should I rethink what I've done? What should I do? All of this fear is directly tied to your belief system, which is completely controlled by your thoughts. What are you telling yourself that is provoking this worry and fear? And is it true? Take the time to start analyzing what you are telling yourself that is provoking your fears, doubts, and your worries. What did a word of God say? Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. And seek not ye that ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. For the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So we must learn to bring our thoughts under subjection to the obedience of, of Jesus. We must learn to challenge our thoughts and our belief systems and see whether or not they align up with the Word of God. Is what we're thinking, does it line up with, with the Word of God? If we're reading the Word of God, there's things that uh, I think we can all give examples of, of times that we're, you know, we, we're praying and seeking God's will and, and, and direction for our lives, and lots of times things are just opened up to us. And, and I've heard many people, you know, in here even uh, testify to the fact of reading Scripture that stuff that they didn't, that they've read the Bible, they've read it all the way through, and they've read something different another time. And I think a lot of times it's because of what we're needing or what we're looking for, and God shows us things through his Scripture. And, he, and he, at the time of need and the time we have a situation going on, he shares things with us through his word because everything we have need of is right here. If they do not, then we need to change our thoughts to that which does align with the word of God. This changing of your thoughts will also change your feelings because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance that you focus upon telling yourself what is the truth and not allow yourself to continue to sabotage yourself with thoughts that are not true. Remember to use Philippians 4 and 8 as a filtering system for your mind and think about whatsoever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and things that are of a good report. Is it going to be easy? We all know life's not necessarily easy. I mean, we have our ups and downs. We have good days, bad days, different things 
life happens, different circumstances. But if we keep our faith in God and we keep our mind in the right place and we keep our focus on living for God, serving God, doing God's will, doing what he has created us for, why he is what he's placed us here for, then we can do all things. And he will, he will provide a way for us in every situation. So I hope I've said something that, uh, if nothing else, at least gets us to thinking upon some things, uh, and get us uh, focusing uh, on, on working toward doing what God has planned for us. Thank you. Brother Chris, thank you for that word. And I'm not going to pull the pastor, and I promise that I'm not going to try to sneak a preach, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on in my mind right now, you know, bits and pieces of things that you talked about. But one of the biggest destroyers of faith is ourselves. It's the things that we allow in our eyes. It's the things we allow in our ears. It's the things that we allow to take hold in our mind. And whenever we allow unholy things in, whenever we allow things to take root in our minds that don't belong there, we don't make room for God anymore. And he is an utmost gentleman. He is not going to force his way in. And whenever we allow things of the world to take up space, we force him out. But in the scripture, in Ephesians chapter 6, God gives us some tools that we can use. And one of those is the helmet of salvation. And whenever we put that on, it's not just the knowledge of what the plan of salvation is, but a helmet is what is used to protect us. It can protect our eyes. It can protect our ears. Because whenever the devil gets a foothold in you, he tries to destroy you from the inside out. Brother Chris, like you said, we have to gird up our minds. We have to lock up our minds to keep the enemy out and keep the holy things in. It, it just, and, you know, just real life application. I remember I, I taught a lesson in the back to the kids. I, I may have preached it out here. I can't remember, but does anybody know how to kill a cactus? Cactus or cacti have a waxy coating on them. They have a layer of protection. They have a helmet, if you will. You can spray whatever you want to on it. You can stomp it. You can cut it down. You can set it on fire, but it's going to grow back. And it's going to grow back, and it's going to grow back. But the way you kill a cactus is you have to cut a hole in it, and you put your herbicide or the poison on the inside, and you let it rot from the inside out. And that is exactly how the enemy gets at us when we don't guard our minds. And when we don't guard our minds, the garbage of the world can get in, and then our faith can be lost. I said I wasn't going to sneak a preach, but I, I just had that going through my heart and through my mind, Brother Chris, and I just felt like it was just going to sum up what you had for us tonight and just want to thank you for that word. And if we could just all stand in the house tonight, I'm going to go over just a couple announcements real quick. Uh, church cleaning this week is team number six. It's the Esther House girls, so looking forward to that, being used of God. Uh, please be bringing candy for Trunk or Treat. It's on Tuesday, October the 31st in the Family Center. It's from 5 to 8. And if you would like a booth, please let Sister Amanda know there's still time. Uh, pastor's going to be preaching Friday night, this coming Friday night at 7 p.m. at uh, New Bethel in Portageville. So we're going to be there. Praise team's going to be there. So we would like for the church to come and support our pastor as he goes out and gets to do a little bit of evangelism and uh, just, you know, creating some bonds of unity between some other churches in the area. And then we also have a men's wild game cook-up in Bernie on November 6th. So it's potluck. You can bring whatever you want, your favorite dish. Just please let Pastor know if you plan to go. And we have a pumpkin decorating contest going on that ends on the 29th. And we also have a hayride scheduled on November 4th. Going to be leaving the church here at 5 o'clock sharp. So don't be late. Yes, sir, Brother Kevin. So if you want any information on that, reach out to Ronnie or get on his page. Brother Christian, would you pray us out, please? Amen.